What's up everyone? Welcome to my channel again. And today we're going to review 2014 6th generation Honda City. This is the first batch, the first series, which means it does not have the option for the red color and it has four reverse sensor instead of two. The later series does not have four reverse sensor, only the first batch. This CT is a S Plus variant. You can know it by looking at the lamp and the grill combination. If the lamp is smoke and it's matte grill, it's a S variant. If it's a chrome grill, it's a S Plus variant. And if the lamp is not smoke, it's a normal lamp. And it's a chrome grill, it's a E variant. And if it is a matte grill, it's a V variant, the higher spec. Now we talk about frontal design. The frontal design is actually very aggressive and very sporty. And for the rear end, it lacks a rear fog light, which is very important, especially in the Malaysia weather. The dashboard of the Honda City is actually very good. The design is very brilliant, but everything is plastic. And for the lower variant, the center console is not that good in design, as well as the meter cluster, which looks a little bit dated compared to the higher variant. But the leg room and the headroom for the interior in the front as well as the back is actually very big for a small car. Before we jump in the car, we'll do some tests first. The ride on this car is actually very sporty. It's quite bumpy because the suspension is very stiff. Because of that, the ride is not very comfort. But you can feel the car is very stable. It keeps the car at the ground all the time. The throttle response on this car is actually very delayed. The moment you put your foot down, it takes like one second or more for the car to respond to your throttle. But once the car reacts to your throttle, it's very powerful. Talking about power, the car is powered by L15 A7 engine. It's the same block as the latest Honda Civic. It's the same block as the Honda Jazz, Honda BRV, Honda A-Wave, Honda Free, and Honda Mobilio. The engine actually produces decent amount of power. Produce 88 kilowatts of horsepower and 145 newton meters of torque. But the engine is actually a SOSC engine. As we all know, SOSC VTEC does not give you a very good kick, but it is very fuel efficiency. And talking about fuel efficiency, the car can achieve 17 to 20 km per liter, which is as expected as a EEV car. Even if my Proton Persona can only achieve that. If you drive 90 km per hour all the way in a very perfect condition. And for this car, it does not have a drive mode shifter. But it has three modes. The comfort mode, which is you put into D and you cruise like normal. And there is an eco mode when you press that icon button. It reduces the throttle response and make it more delayed. And the RPM draw is very dramatic, so it can save a lot of fuel. And one more is a VTEC mode, it's when you put into sport mode in the transmission, the RPM goes up and never goes down. The VTEC is always on, but it consumes a lot of fuel because the RPM never goes down. So I call it a VTEC mode, not a sport mode. I hope you find this review informative. If you like the video, please please give a thumbs up and share it to your friends. And also consider subscribe to me. As I will upload a new video every week. 
and I'll see you in the next video.